Okay, so the next thing, like I said, we need to do is open the file. So I'm going to create a variable called handle. And this is going to be equal to f open. And we are opening, uh, let's just create a new variable here called file name so we can reference this as well. So the file name is hash.txt. So for the arguments for f open, we need the file name specified and the method, the way we want to open it. So we're opening just to read the data in. So we just need to pop an R in there. Now what we want to do is we want to create a new variable with the uh, file password. So this variable is essentially going to equal the hash that's inside here. So file password is equal to f read. And then we need to supply a couple of arguments here. The first argument is where we're reading from, which is the handle. And the second is the file, the uh, amount of data we want to open. So the file, we want the entire file size. So we use this file size function here as opposed to specifying um, an amount of data in bytes. So file size, and then we want to just reference that to back to our file name. So what we've done so far is we've created a reference for our hash.txt, and we've opened that using the fopen function with read um, properties on that so we can read it. Now we've created a new variable called file password which will contain this hash so we can do something with it in our program and we've used used the fread function and we've used uh, we've specified that we want to read data from this file this specific file here which I've named handle and then we're opening the full file size of the uh, hash.txt so let's just put up an echo in front of here uh, in front of there so we uh, echo out this data so let's just type anything in here it doesn't really matter at this stage and click submit you see that we've now gained this hash from this um, hash.txt file so now we can do something with it now what we need to do is we need to hash the password that the user has entered so this user password needs to be converted to a hash in order to compare it to another hash so we can do this just by simply saying md5 and wrapping that in the md5 function. Now the password is automatically converted to an md5 hash and if we were to compare them they'd either equal something completely different or the same as they're now both hashes. So we can create an if statement and we can say if user password is equal to file password do something else we want to run this block so we want to do something else so obviously the else is going to be incorrect password oh, password there we go and otherwise we're going to give the user a um, confirmation message that their password was okay so password okay so now let's run the program or our, or our script rather so we're back to we're here uh, please enter a password uh, right okay the reason that it's saying that automatically is because we have this check in here as well as this check so even if we haven't submitted the form we're still processing please enter a password um, this is an easy fix you just need to break it up into two different if statements one inside another um, but for now we'll just go ahead and type in a password so I'm going to type in Alex as the password and click submit. Now we've received the error incorrect password. Now if we were type, to type password, what's going to happen now is we are hashing the user password. Um, we're hashing this uh, vet value here, password, and we are converting it to an MD5 hash. Then we're comparing it to the MD5 hash already stored in hash. Therefore, password hashed is equal to this therefore the password matches so let's just click submit and it says password ok now why do we use password hashes in the first place this md5 encryption what's the point in using it we could just define a password variable inside this file where no one has access to it no one can view the source of the web page when we're processing in PHP because everything's done server side. So how do we how do we explain why we need MD5 hashes? Now the reason is even though MD5 isn't the most secure form of uh, of hashing and it isn't the most secure form of encryption, it can be cracked easily 
um, by checking um, using a brute force method. However, um, let's just say you had a database set up and there were lots and lots of usernames and passwords. So you had lots of users on your website and you were using a database. Now, what happens if someone gains unauthorized access to your database? What's going to happen is they are going to be able to see all your passwords if they're unencrypted. Let's just say you had a website that let that let people say make a payment or was to store sensitive information. If you were storing a password and someone had access to your database and they could view users' passwords, you may have let's just open a new text file. You may have a column called username and a column called password. And I could have Alex here and I could have say pass one two three. We could have another user called Billy and the password could be I love PHP. Now if I was to break into this uh, this database, I can already see the user's passwords. Therefore, I can go straight over to the website and I can log in using these uh, passwords. However, if these were MD5 encrypted, for example, look like this, it just so happens that these two users are going to have the same password. But if it looked like this, you know, someone that has access, unauthorized access to anywhere you store these will say oh well I can't convert these because remember I said earlier in the tutorial that MD5 is one-way encryption there is no way that you can return this to its original value and that's what we call one-way encryption if I was to create an encryption method that let's say made a equal to one it made um, or let's do this another way or made B equal to two or C equal to three, um, and my password was B C A, and I encrypted it as two three one. You would be able to reverse this encryption, so you'd be able to say two three one. Well, I know that I know the algorithm that's used to encrypt this, so I know that two is equal to B. I know that three is equal to C, and I know that one is equal to A. So I now know that the password is B C A. However, MD5 doesn't work like that. There's no way of converting this back. So you're protecting against your users and against your website. And if you haven't already looked at user databases and My MySQL databases, that will come later. But we'll always be storing them as MD5 hashes, or well, in most cases anyway. For tut tutorial purposes, some people, or, and I certainly might not, but in a real life situation, you must always store a password with at least the le level of encryption of MD5. Okay, so that's about it for MD5. I hope you learned something. And remember to always encrypt passwords with one-way algorithms.